basically at the end of one of the days in the studio, my computer blew up. Um, I just bought all this equipment for my birthday and hide and seek was one of the earlier ones in the, you know, when I was doing the writing because I really wanted to do an acapella piece. Um, anyway, so I was kind of working away, beavering away. I was probably doing something really complicated that done lots of editing. And I was really annoyed with myself because the computer just blew up and I'd lost not just that day's work, but two weeks of work. Of course, I didn't back things up and we didn't have the cloud and things like that in those days. Um, so I just didn't back it up because you have to back it up onto like DVDs and it was really boring. Um, and anyway, so I, I um, yeah, so it blew up and I was really annoyed. And instead of leaving the studio that night, it was probably about three in the morning or something um, with a bad taste in my, about, you know, a bad feeling about that day and coming back to it and just being like, oh, you know, I've got to sort all that out. Um, I would always, if something like that happened, I would always do something positive. So, I'd, so I thought, okay, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna quickly record something, anything, just to kind of clear the air. And I noticed this bit of equipment that a friend of mine had lent me, um, and he wanted it back. So I just picked it up, I plugged it in, I pulled out, I, like dusted off a mini disc recorder. Um, actually, I probably didn't dust it off. I probably used it all the time <laughs> uh, in those. Days. And then I um, just plugged in my mic and I knew how to plug it together. You basically put a MIDI lead into the, um, into the box and then you plug a microphone into the box and you play the keyboard and the notes that you're playing make your, make your voice do those harmonies by a synthesized voice. Um, and it's really, really fun to play, but I never played it before. So I just found a setting that I liked which was this kind of four note polyphony one, which meant that if I was playing, even if I was playing nine or 10 fingers, it would only play. So yeah, I just sat down at the piano. The first thing I played, you know, I don't think I had the word. Wrote, wrote the basics of the song very quickly in this improvised state. And it felt really good. It was probably about six or seven minutes long rather than how long it is now. And then right at the end, I lived, so I worked uh, in my studio, it was next to a train line. And then right at the end, this train passed by. And so at the end of hide and seek, you can hear this kind of, doesn't sound like a train, but now you know it's a train, you'll hear it's a train. Um, a train harmonized. Um, and then another day when I was recording the voice properly, um, because that was just like, you know, not singing it, not singing any lyrics, but pretty much getting the melody down. And mostly all of the, the gaps in between, the breath in between was really, really, something special about it. The emotion in the breath, um, yeah. the sentiment in the emotion in the breath kind of was something that I actually copied and pasted quite a lot of the, like the breathing um, into the final version. Um, and then I had to go, obviously, because I couldn't record the MIDI. Uh, so I had to go and refigure, I had to figure out all the MIDI because um, some of the inversions were so beautiful because of this machine doing whatever version of my chords. Um, and then I took a really long time to write the lyrics. I knew what, it, what I wanted it to be about very early, um, but it took me a long time to write the exact perfect lyrics for that song. And then, and then I just, yeah, spent quite a lot of time kind of building air around it because it's all done inside the box. Other than the voice, it's just a voice and there's no kind of real stuff going on. So, um, I took a long time in the delays and at the time and went to a particular house and cooked a particular meal. And the sound of the cooking of that meal um, is quietly frying in the background, which is what sounds like rain, but it's actually of our dinner. Um, and, and then when I finished, right at the end, there was this uh, um, an ice cream van that would kind of come around at three o'clock or whatever because I was near a school and so you could hear an ice cream van coming in at the end which is quite good timing because it is you know kind of some of the bits are relating to childhood so yeah it was a, a kind of a two or three week process maybe I just say a bit originally was minor that's what Richie was telling me it's like no no originally you were going you couldn't decide whether you wanted it major or minor I oh, know originally it was major sorry because it's minor now no, no. Oh, I can't remember which Mm -hmm. yeah it's minor um so originally it was major and it was a completely different feel um that's probably the best well i, I don't know that's my favorite bit anyway 
Uh, it's such a good bit. Uh, it's such an amazing record. How how do you do it live? Um, it must be really difficult. Well, now I do it different, but for a long time I just played it with a guitar and just plugged in the harm a, a different harmonizer because that one wouldn't stand, wouldn't, wouldn't work on a show. So I used a voice live two voice. I think it's called a voice live two. I can't remember. Um, but now I use. Now I do like a kind of a, well, I haven't done it for ages because I haven't taught for ages, but the last time I went on tour, um, I did a kind of version of the version that's in the Harry Potter play, um, Hide and Seek 2, which is inspired by, well, it was actually commissioned by Rupert Hine, who was one of those people who came, yeah, one of the only people that came to my studio, really amazing, lovely producer, writer, man. Um, and I did one, it was called Songs for Tibet. So I did that a version of that song, kind of like a drone. Um, so when I did that live, I did it with my gloves. I played the song with my gloves. I have these gloves which I make music with, which, you know, it's kind of a project that I started about 10 years ago, but it's now this whole different thing. Um, and built up all the tracks with my voice and tuned some stuff down and then brought, kind of moved the sound around the room in 360 in some of the venues because the gloves could send OSC messages to the speaker system, which was um, DMB Soundscape, it was called. Um, oh. And I was also moving the lights around as well, with DMX, with my gloves. Only at the Roundhouse, actually. That one was only at the Roundhouse with the lights in Camden. Um, so yeah, it was a very immersive uh, experience. And sometimes, if it was a smaller venue, um, mainly in Europe, like the well, mainland, um, I would go into the crowd and you know just sing it amongst people um so yeah it's very different i guess i just got a bit tired of singing it on the key <laughs> um and it's never going to be a good a version as it is on the record because it's like meticulously sung and you know all the details to the the delays and everything i couldn't recreate that um so it always just sounded a bit like a bad version of it 